Hi everyone. Uh, this is my P. Arul, Assistant Professor, R&D Engineering College. So in this video, I am going to give you the demonstrations about LPC 2148 Pulse Width Modulation Unit. Everyone knows the pulse width modulation output used to control the stepper motor or servo motor or any kind of motor to control the speed of the particular motor. So the speed control is based on the duty cycle of the PWM. So the duty cycle calculated based on the on time period divided by total time period of the pulse width waveform. So in this picture it shows some kind of duty cycle from 0 percentage to 25 up to 100 percentage duty cycles. So on period then total time period it's kind of their duty cycle. Particularly in LPC 2148 PWM module has 6 PWM output signals and the 6 pins are allotted for PWM output. So these are the 6 PWM output channels from PWM 1 to PWM 6 that is pin allotted to LPC 2148 0 0.0, 0 0.7, 0 0.1, 0 0.8 and 0 0.21 and 0 0.9. So these are the registers used to uh, set the duty cycle and generate the PWM signals from LPC 2148 microcontroller. So this ARM microcontroller has the PWM registers like uh, the important registers are interrupt registers and PWM control registers, PWM counter, timer counter, prescale registers and prescale counter and match register from MR0 to MR6. So the MR0 match register used to set the total time period value and MR1 to MR6 used to set the on time period of the particular PWM channel. Similarly, we have uh, 6 PWM channels. In the 6 PWM channel is numbered as MR1 to MR6, uh, MR1 corresponding to PWM1, MR2 corresponding to PWM2. So likewise, up to PWM6, the corresponding matches are MR6. So we used to have that value in MR1 register and MR0 register. It is the duty cycle of PWM1. Similarly, we have some standard registers are control registers load enable registers and match control registers these are the registers used to generate the pwm pwm signals with the duty cycles from the corresponding pwm channel and we have uh, this is the working of pwm pin so uh, i will show you the demo so timer counter keep on increment the value so initially it loaded with 20 and MR0 is loaded with 100 and MR1 loaded with 60. So when the timer counter used to increment the value right from 20 to 100 when it when it the value reaches the MR1 value so the counter the flip flop will reset right. Just see how it is working if the clock pulse is arriving during the clock pulses the timer counter will be incremented 20 then 40 it will be still the output is 1 and 60 still the output is 1 when it is exit the 60 the output will reset the output will be 0 then again when the pulse is uh, again will start to match the value up to MR0 register this is only on pulse then we will get the off pulse up to the match register 0 so then it will be increment 80 then 100 then will be reset we will get that on period and then off period similarly the timer counter and the timer count registers and the match registers and match registers 0 used to find out the duty cycle and generate the PWM signals. So let's I will give you the demo for how it is working by using KL uh, Microvision software. Just I open that KL Microvision 4. And uh, just will go to project, new microvision project, and I will type that uh, PWM, give that file name PWM demo. Select the target device LPC 2148. Yes, yes, and uh, open that one file, add new file, and particularly it is C file and store that file name pwm demo.c file and i already have developed the program and verified the program just i selected that program yes 
So in this program, I used to have to enable the pins. Totally, I used the PWM MR1, MR2. So two PWM signals, MR1, MR2. Particularly, I'm going to enable 0 0.0 and 0 0.7 pins. So the particular pin select zero pins are 0x8002. 0 0 and uh, MR0 loaded the value 15,000. And uh, MR1 loaded the value 75,000. So the PWM1 signal have 75,000 divided by 1,50,000. And PWM 290,000 divided by 1,15,000. So, almost we have get 60% uh, and 50% duty cycle in that PWM 1 and PWM 2. Let's check how it is working. Once I save the program, just do build. Uh, I think no error in this program. Then uh, I will start it to debug uh, PWM 1 and PWM 2, right? Uh, 0 0.0 and 0 0.7, I think so. We will check it. The pin number PWM1 and PWM2, 0 0.0 and 0 0.7. So let's do debug. Yes. So we have that fantastic features in the Kale ARM Kale Microvision IDE. We have that uh, logic analyzer to view the waveform kinds of output. Just I open that logic analyzer. And in this logic analyzer, I'm going to set that. Uh, port numbers of PWM1 and PWM2 the port numbers are let's set up that port number I think uh, port 0 0.G1 port 0, 0.0 and it's port 0, 0 0.0 is the bit type of output and red color and port 0 0.7 this also kind of bit type of output yes then i used to set the two pwm channels and if i click the run i will get that pwm waveform right so the pwm waveform generated in pwm 1 and pwm 2 channel let's do zoom out here we'll get that particular waveform here yes and it has various duty cycles right we'll stop that uh, screen we'll check it uh, right so off period and on period is equal that is pwm1 is 50 percentage duty cycle and here on period is high off period is low maybe it is a uh, 60 percentage and then 40 percentage 60 percentage on there will be uh, 40 percentage so 60 percent duty cycle PWM2, PWM1 is 40 percentage duty cycle, right? So, this is the way uh, we have to set the value here. Uh, PWM MR0 loaded the value of total time period 1,50,000 and PWM1 loaded the value of 75,000. So, 75,000 will be 1,15,000. Uh, 1,15,000 it is equal to 50 percentage. We have the 50 percentage here and 90,000 divided by 1,50,000 to 60 percentage 0. 0.6 so we have the 60 percentage duty cycle here right so this is the way we have to verify the PWM output uh, in this PWM channels and you can change the values of uh, MR0 and MR1 MR2 and up to MR6 can generate 6 PWM channel at that moment and with various duty cycle right so please try on this thank you